Hi, everybody. Uh, let's get started. Uh, welcome to Eclipse Bluechi. Um, my name is Michael Engel. I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat, and I'm currently working on Red Hat's in-vehicle operating system, uh, short rivals. And I'm also the project lead of Bluechi. Um, suddenly, it doesn't work anymore. Um, and So the agenda for today is uh, we'll first have a look at what Eclipse Bluechi actually is uh, and then dive into its components and architectures. The third and uh, main part will be um, about Bluechi's feature, uh, features and we will conclude this presentation by having a look at its uh, resource utilization. And so what is Eclipse Bluechi? Um, to, un to understand what it is, uh, let's have a look at the problem it tries to solve. Um, in the automotive industry, there is the uh, concept of a software-defined vehicle, which essentially states that a car should be able to evolve during its lifetime, like adding or removing uh, features entirely through software. And container technology is considered key for this. Uh, for example, also to start or stop uh, containers on multiple ECUs or multiple nodes. And this is exactly what Bluechi tries to provide. A uh, workload orchestrator, which is deterministic, so we know when, what will run where. Uh, it should be as lightweight as possible um, due to the resource limitations, and it should be as fast as possible. Um, and of course, it needs to be able to control containerized applications. Um, and last but not least, we want uh, it to be FUSA certifiable, so we can run it on all ACIL levels, essentially. So the idea behind uh, Bluechi is then to use SysDebD as a local service manager, and you add with Bluechi a thin layer on top of this to enable remote management. And that's exactly what Bluechi is. Um, it's an extension for SystemD for multi-node environments with a focus on highly regulated ecosystems, such as cars. Um, we've written it in C, and last year in October, I think, we contributed it to uh, the Eclipse Foundation, um, specifically the Eclipse STV. Uh, which is a working group uh, that tries to get car manufacturers and tech companies and so on uh, together and shape the future of the software-defined vehicle. And all projects under the Eclipse STV umbrella are open source, of course. So I'd highly recommend checking this out if you are interested. So let's have a look at the components and architecture. As I've uh, explained before, we are building on top of SystemD. That means uh, SystemD needs to be running on each uh, machine that we want to manage. And the first component that Bluechi adds is uh, the agent, or Bluechi agent. Um, this one connects via SystemD socket, or Unix domain socket, to uh, SystemD, and is thus able to control the Dbus API, or all it, and uh, this enables Bluechi agent to control services locally. We also go ahead and uh, listen for any signals that SystemD emits, which might happen, for example, if you start a, a SystemD uh, unit. And yeah, now that we have all these agents running on the machine, uh, machines. Uh, they are connecting themselves via TCP IP to the second component, which is the controller. Uh, the controller is deployed on the main node and can, of course, run alongside uh, the agents. Uh, the agent is uh, providing a DBus API on uh, this peer connection so that the controller is then able to control services on that respective node remotely. And as you see, uh, there is only a peer connection between each agent and the controller. 
So that means agents cannot interfere with each other um, or communicate directly. And to be able to control this whole system, <coughs> the Bluetooth controller then provides uh, another API on the local system bus, uh, which then other applications can use. For example, the third component that Bluetooth provides is uh, Bluetooth CTL, which is essentially a CLI tool that you can use for manually managing um, services on the connected nodes. Um, it is written in C and a kind of reference implementation of this DBUS API. Uh, other applications you can, of course, write as well. Um, and these can be written in basically any language you want, like Rust, Go, Python, um, because the DBUS uh, is essentially programming language agnostic. Um, yeah, and yeah, just uh, for your information, this is essentially then the overall architecture or an overview of it where we have all the components and essentially some workers with the agent running. We can, of course, scale it up to like an arbitrary number of nodes. Um, let's dive into the features of Blue G. Um, but before we, before we can do that, uh, we need to set it up. Um, as you can see here in the diagram, uh, the control and the agent read configuration files where, for example, the agent gets information about the IP address and port of the controller and the, no, the, the name it uses to register at the, control, uh, at the controller. Uh, the Splucci controller, in turn, gets configured with a list of node names, for example, that uh, it allows to connect. If an agent tries to connect which uh, name isn't in that list, it gets rejected. And as you can read here, uh, we can install and can configure this manually, or we can use the provided Ansible collection <coughs> to automate this. Um, and as I've said before, um, all the communication uh, or interaction with Bluechi um, has to go through the DBUS API, um, especially the local system bus. And this means that we can manage the access with DBUS policies so allowing local users to uh, access this API or deny it. Um, by default, only the root user can access uh, this DBUS API of Blue Chain. So um, we can, of course, use uh, Blue Chain CTL to monitor the status of nodes, like in this example. Uh, using Blue Chi CTL status to get an output of all the nodes that we can uh, expect to be there, their state, offline or offline, their IP address, and a timestamp when we've last seen them. Um, by adding this uh, minus W flag, we can continuously monitor the state, and this is not done via polling, but rather we wait for Blue Chi to emit signals um, that give us a notification about any state changes. Um, we can do the same by adding the uh, node name and the service name to get the status here uh, for this specific uh, service. Like in this case, the primary and the cow service. Um, here we get, for example, the unit name and the respective uh, system D unit states. And if we can monitor uh, services, we can, of course, uh, control them as well. Uh, I've listed some examples here, like starting or stopping uh, system D services, restarting or reloading them, and so forth. So if you know system CTL, you might notice uh, some similarities. It's essentially like system CTL, just for remote nodes. And this was also one of the guiding principles when implementing Blue Chi CTL. And now that we've seen how to manu manually manage services, um, what about writing custom applications for it to leverage the DBUS API that Blue Chi provides? Um, we can write custom uh, applications, like I said, in any language we want. Um, by using then uh, generic libraries, for example, Dustbus for Python or Plotbus for Go. And uh, in the diagram below, you see an example or two examples, a state manager and an uh, MQTT bridge. 
Um, why would we want to implement uh, an own state manager? Well, the BlueG uh, controller does not have any state. All the state that uh, is in the system is essentially stored in system D, so to say. Um, so if we have cross-node dependencies, for example, when um, like service A or node B tries, uh, requires uh, service C or node D to be running, we can embed that in a state manager and ensure that these services uh, or these dependencies are resolved. Um, and there is another alternative to which I will uh, come later on. And the second example is an MQTT bridge where you could listen, for example, for state changes of nodes or system D units and then publish that to an MQTT broker where it could be further processed. Um, and I've written some, uh, a small example here to start the cow service, which you can see in line three, um, on uh, the worker uh, one node. I've written this uh, in uh, Python using the Dustbus library, and I'm quickly walking you through it. So in line five, we are basically opening the message bus, so the local system bus. Then we are getting the proxy to the controller, resolving um, the node path of the worker one node in line seven. And in line eight, uh, we use that node path to get a proxy on that node. So we can finally start uh, the service on line 10. Rather complex. Um, if you're not familiar with DBus or um, the BlueG DBus API, you have to go through the specification and get familiar with all these terms. Um, but luckily, uh, similar to REST APIs, we can generate clients. Um, here, for example, with the DBus code gen project uh, for Rust. And you can integrate this in your workflow to generate uh, these clients automatically based on the specification that BlueG provides. And uh, for Python specifically, we provide uh, type bindings, which simplifies this even further. So same example here, like starting the cow service on worker one um, is not even shorter, but you don't have to deal with these interface concepts or service names or paths or whatever. You can simply use, well, the classes we provide. Um, and after we've written a custom application, uh, let's have a look at, let's say, the uh, key uh, feature that Bluchi wants to provide, controlling containerized applications. Um, well, since Bluchi builds on system D, we essentially get this in quotes out of the box um, because we can already write system D units where we start like containers with simple podman run commands. And Quadlet, which is um, a project that is now in uh, the podman repository, uh, simplifies that even further. So it's... Um, yeah, it, it is a systemd generator, kind of, that reads uh, quadlet files, uh, ending with a .container file ex uh, extension, and based on that generates systemd uh, units that uh, already contains all these different podman command, uh, commands, like podman run, podman stop, and so on. Um, and it's also quite easy to get into quadlet because it uses a similar syntax to systemd. Um, and if you want to know more about how to um, control containerized applications with BlueG and SystemD, uh, you can attend the BlueG workshop tomorrow. Um, just a small advertisement. Um, yeah, I've um, mentioned cross-node dependencies before. Uh, let's have a look at an example. We have three worker nodes here in this example. Uh, on worker one, we want to run a consumer service. On worker three, a producer service. And both communicate via MQTT, um, MQTT broker, which is in the MQTT service on worker two. So both require this service. Uh, so the question is, how can we make sure that MQTT service is running whenever we want to start one of these other services? 
One option is to use an external state manager, like I've stated before. The other option is to use BlueG's built-in feature we call a proxy service that essentially allows you to use existing systemd mechanisms for expressing these dependencies, like using a simple once or requires. And we can, of course, order these dependencies as well, like with before and after. One limitation, though, is that we can only use uh, forward properties, meaning we can use a once, but not the inverse, like a wanted by. And in our example, um, let's have a look at the consumer service, um, where we add another once to the system D unit uh, of it, uh, requiring the blue G minus proxy service, which is actually a template unit. And after the add symbol, you specify the instance name of the template. Uh, and for the proxy services, we defined that the structure of this is like displayed here. First the node name, then an underscore, and then the service name. And by this, basically Bluchi takes care of the rest. Um, and we can apply this, of course, to uh, the after as well, to make sure that the consumer service is only started when the MQTT service is already running. Um, switching to communication, um, the communication between agent and controller is by default unencrypted. Uh, we decided for that to keep the communication and setup as lightweight as possible. And if you still want to encrypt uh, the communication, which there are good reasons to, you might want to use the double proxy approach, where you essentially spin up two proxies on each ECU and have the agent and the controller connect to those. Uh, and this proxy, for example, yeah, like the HA proxy, then forwards the communication as well as encrypts it. And I've linked to here a, a nice uh, blog post where you can dive in more uh, into more detail for it. Um, going to high availability, um, consider this example again. We have three nodes, all running with Bluchi, and on one we have the controller. So what happens if the node with the controller goes down for some reason? Well, based on the structure uh, of Bluchi, the system doesn't work anymore. The controller is a single point of failure. So what we might want to do is um, this, like spinning up a controller on another node and connecting the agents to that new controller instance. And for this, we recently introduced a DBus API on the, uh, well, from the uh, BlueG agent, so you don't need the controller. This, however, only enables maybe high availability setups we know there is a lot more to this, like detecting that the node with the controller is really down and triggering the switch, uh, or performing leader election or persisting changes. This should be done by external components dedicated to this, and also ensuring the redundancy. The only thing we try to aim at is to really support these scenarios. And with that, let's go to the last part of this presentation resource utilization. Um, we ran a scaling test where we uh, used two systems on a chip. The first one spinning up the controller and in, on the second one we were starting like a number of containers with the agent. All agents were connecting to the controller and in the same scenario we were starting a systemd unit on, in these containers via the controller. Um, the, uh, the properties of these socks you see here on the slides. And during these scenarios, we recorded the CPU usage, memory usage, and uh, network. And in the next slides, we go through the uh, results of um, we go through the results of the uh, socket one. Uh, so sorry, not socket one. Sock one um, with the Bluetooth controller. And, for example, starting with uh, the CPU, you see three graphs. I'm not sure if you can read the text 
Um, the first graph is essentially where one agent uh, container was connected to um, the controller. The red one, five agents, and the yellow one, 10 agents. Mm. And as you can see, the CPU usage stays below 5%, except for that one outlier with five agents where it uh, peaked at around 16%. Um, for memory, uh, for in all scenarios, it stayed around 0.6% uh, memory usage. Uh, and this was essentially the same for scenarios even up to 500. Um, so even when 500 agents connected at the same time, we didn't use more than 0.6% uh, of the memory. Um, going to the network. Uh, the network traffic was rather low at around one kilobyte per second, which you can maybe see here. Um, and this shows actually the transmit uh, direction, so direction from the controller to the agent. The same kind of results we got for the receive uh, um, direction, so communication from the agent to the controller, where it also stayed below one kilobyte per second. And uh, yeah, this shows essentially the low memory and CPU and network consumption of the uh, of Bluechi in general, or in this case, the controller. And uh, with that, yeah, I'd like to conclude this talk. And if you have any questions or so, yeah, feel free to shoot. Thanks for your attention. Ah, yeah, then, sorry. Do you prevent nodes from having end virus? Uh, pardon? Do you prevent nodes from having end of source? <laughs> yeah, go back to the yes. uh, crossword. Uh, this, this one? No, no. We're cross dependencies right there. Um, Just work it, work it to there. I have an end of source. Ah, uh, yeah, th uh, sorry, yeah, this one. Uh, what exactly? How do you determine where the underscore is? Can I have, could I create a worker underscore tool? Uh, could you repeat the question? Yeah, so the question is um, if we can use any other symbol except for the underscore, right? right. Um, unfortunately, no. <laughs> this is hard coded at the moment. Um, yeah, so we decided for this design. Um, it might change over time. At the moment, uh, probably it will stay at the underscore. If it's more widely used and we figure out it's something different, then, um, yeah. Has anybody else started to use this? Or just has uh, I don't think that feature is uh, used very much yet. Um, no, but is anybody using uh, blue cheese besides SDK? Yes, there are already adapters uh, of blue cheese. Um, not sure I can name them. We received some contributions, for example, from uh, a car fan manufacturer um, that were already using uh, Bluechi in a car as a prototype. Like, I think, um, showing some, some lightning stuff, or, uh, lightning stuff some, some light work. Yeah. Mm, any other questions? Yes? Uh, no. Um, so the question was uh, uh, the comparison between unencrypted and encrypted communication, right? Yeah. Um, no, we don't uh, have this kind of comparison yet. Um, till now, I think, uh, because we are in the car and the well, communication setup, the, the environment is considered, in quotes, secure, um, there is not yet any encryption being done. Um, but Maybe in the future. Yeah, yeah then. Loaded question. Yeah. Why, why would I use this instead of Kubernetes? <laughs> in, a, in a car? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, one second. Yeah. Um, okay, so the question was 
why use Gucci instead of Kubernetes in the core? Um, well, the answer is basically written there. Um, if we have to make the comparison between Gucci and uh, Kubernetes, probably it's uh, worth not noting that Kubernetes is uh, using concepts like eventual consistency, and you don't want your car to be eventual consistent. Like, I don't want to eventually stop, uh, or when, when I hit the brakes, I don't want to eventually stop, I want to stop now, for example. Um, and that's essentially the deterministic part. Uh, another part could be the FUSA certifiable. Um, like, Kubernetes is huge. If you want to uh, FUSA certify it, um, that's probably a lot of, a really lot of work. And with Bluechip, we try to be as minimalistic as possible here. These were at least two points that came to mind. Maybe there are more. Did, did that answer? No. Okay. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> Took you too seriously, sorry. Uh, yes? I, I think in last this talk, mm -hmm. you mentioned that there is an idea to have like a Kubernetes-like API so that developers mm -hmm. can develop on Kubernetes mm -hmm. and then move to Fuji. Yep. Uh, is it still a fail or is it that? Uh, let's say the idea is still there. Um, we are also exploring, or at least I was a bit exploring with this, for example, um, where was it? MQTT bridge, for example. Um, so you, the, the idea here would be to run uh, Bluechi on your uh, embedded system, car, whatever, and then use uh, Kubernetes uh, independent of that. And thus you would be able to control it and push some data, whatnot. Um, but at the moment, we don't uh, well, uh, work on this. Uh, yeah? Since this is mostly about managing system services, have you considered about how this could be merged, like a system being a instead of being a separate project? Uh, so the question was, uh, because this is mainly uh, about system D, why not merge it to upstream system D? Um, initially, I think we thought about this, um, but having something merged to system D and then, uh, of course, upstream will take quite a while. It's, uh, <laughs> so we decided to have a standalone application codes uh, before that, but we don't, um, let's say, exclude the idea of contributing it to system D in the future, if they are up to it. Let's, let's see. 